Smoking weed on tour. How much do you smoke on tour? A shitload. Do you find it edibles better because it's hard to do the shit every night singing? Because how many shows have you done in a row the most? Uh, two years ago, we did this thing with uh, uh, Death Angel and Sodom. We did 17 in a row, back okay. to back. Sepultura, Death Angel, Exodus, 24 in a row. Dude, by the by, row show 17, dude, I was my, my throat was hamburger. I couldn't imagine smoking weed. Matter um, of fact, I talked to Neil from Clutch. He said he switched to edibles on tour because he couldn't do... <coughs> Couldn't do the. Well, I know Chuck do Billy doesn't smoke weed on tour either, but when he comes oh. home, he'll burn as well. Mm. So, um, I think my technique doesn't necessarily bother it yeah. uh, because I find that I get bored, and I think that's the reason why I'm smoking. Uh. You know, there's a lot of time to do nothing all day, Rob. So yeah. it's like, and I found that I'm I'm not gonna smoke nothing. I'm smoking, and after the fucking third day, I'm like going. <laughs> All right, where's the fucking local guy? So, I need like four ounces. You know what I mean? And then, and but I, 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 I've always said this, and I've always kind of prided myself. I don't really ever lose my voice. I there's a certain technique, and and I know not to sing too hard, even if I can't hear myself. Yeah. And I, I just have trained myself not to. Now, back in the days when we were drinking and gacking it up, I would be like, fucking, you know, like. So, you, uh, you think I'll be okay tonight? But I just found probably since me, through the tempo of the damn years and even through Hatred and Double yeah. Death Patrol, I just, the, the way I approach it now is I won't blow myself out. And even if I, even yeah. if I come up and I can't hear here, I know how hard to press here or I here. did the same thing. I went and actually did uh, two lessons with Melissa Cross in New York. Yeah, I know who that um, is. And I did, and because I, I was having trouble the first couple of years. Because, so... I joined the band. I'd never done it before, man, right? I was smoking two packs of cigarettes a day, drinking fucking a gallon of coffee. When you, know. you joined the band? When I joined the band. Dude, I, through the first record, I was smoking cigarettes while singing in a microphone. Oh, really? Yeah, I quit. I So, so I, I was a tech guy. I didn't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't... It didn't matter to me. I was... You know, I was I was addicted, dude. I was lighting one cigarette off another. I was smoking. At the end, I was smoking three packs. Now, how long did you twist your tech window there before you 2002 got... 2002 to 2005. Okay, so three years of teching before you got... You did, yeah. You came to start... So, so I did the tour with, with, uh, with Exodus, and then I jumped on a tour with Satyricon in the States. Satyricon was... Uh, um, uh, Joey Jordison from Slipknot was playing drums and Satir because the guy from Satyricon couldn't come to America because he killed somebody. So um, I'm the guitar tech on that tour. And um, and that's after the Megadeth. Uh, after Exodus. it was right out. Like I went from one tour. Like I actually flew from San Francisco uh -huh. to L.A. and jumped on a, on a tour bus. Like I flew home and then jumped on a tour bus um, and went on that tour. And that was leading up from... It was leading all the way up to the day before Christmas and it ended in New York. And um, so uh, I was going to spend the Christmas in New York <clears throat> and I'll never forget it. So tour ends, not in a good way. Um, one of the two of the guys got accused of rape. I was there. They didn't rape her. She she was a willing participant and then had buyer's remorse after a little bit of fucking, oh, no. And so... And then and I, I'll tell you a story about the, a, a good ending to it. So two of the guys, cops come on the bus. They arrest two of the guys. They drag them off. Tours over. And I, Joey, I send Joey home on a plane. I go to New York. And uh, Satir goes back to Norway. And uh, the two guitar player, who I liked a lot. So so check this out. So I'm on tour with Satyricon, right? They're, they speak Norwegian the whole fucking time. They don't talk to me in English ever. They have... They never smile. They don't laugh. They don't fucking. They're just. They're fucking. <laughs> they're Norwegian. They look they're, like fucking they're... robots, right? So, so I'm, I'm goofy and funny and try to fuck with them all the time, and they just aren't buying it, right? So we're in. What's the name of that fucking place in, in Ohio with the huge parking lot with the barbecue outside, and it's got the big stage. And it's a huge park lot. We were playing Newport football. Newport Music Hall, Columbus, right? Right, and Columbus, New Ohio, right, 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 Newport right. Music Hall. So yes. we're, we're there, right? And, and one of the guitar players goes, hey, uh, 
if I give you some money, you think you can get me some coke? And I'm like, I don't know. I'll fucking try. I'm, yeah. So I talked to one of the local crew guys. It's I'm a like, hey, man. Town, of course. He's like, can I get some mm-hmm. coke? And they're like, yeah, how much you want? I'm like, eight ball? I'm like, okay. So I get the fucking Norwegian some fucking coke. And now I'm their fucking best friend. I'm their fucking, they're talking to me in English. So, and they wear that corpse paint, right? So they, all look, seven. so they all look fucking mean when they're playing. So they would be playing and then they would turn around, they'd come to the amp and they would smile with this corpse paint on, dude. It was fucking, because they, they, no one could see them right, but me because right. I'm standing behind the amp. And it just, it changed the whole rest of the tour. It was great until that night and I'm fucking in Montreal, man, or, or Ontario or Toronto or wherever it was. But, so the tour ends. I'm, I go to my buddy uh, Lenny in New York. I was living in L.A. Matter of fact, my, I was living with my roommate was Jen from L7, Precious. Uh, really? She, I was, me and, uh, she had a house. I, I rented a room in her house and I was living with her. And uh, You were actually rubbing, before you even got in the band, you were rubbing elbows with, with you know, some you know, heavy hitters that could you know, quite potentially you know, put you, even to not in it, if you never even pursued it as a singer, maybe even a good place as a tech or you know a road manager or that kind of thing you know because it always but i I was i was free though i had i had i had i knew who i was at this point and i walked around nobody when i walked in a room people weren't better than me i was equal to everybody like i I had this but they never were better than you rob you understand they never were i know but fixing that fixing that part of my psychology the the, Uh my brain Fixing that part made me like a, a, maybe a nicer human being. It made me more um, empathetic and sympathetic with people. It made me just made me a nicer fucking guy to be around. And and I was started to be. I was hanging around with stand-up comedians and I was hanging around with musicians and I was you know hanging out at the, at the Rainbow. I was getting tattooed all over, man. I was like you know um, so you know. <clears throat> everything just it just life was just life was just awesome man and i was just you know and i was i I wasn't missing for anything you know what i mean and and one of those things too was i didn't have anybody at home to to i didn't have a wife i didn't have a girlfriend no children right no children so it's kind of like you know um you know it, it was it was i was just i was just styling dude i was just grooving along you know um Never even went fucking scuba diving in California. It was my whole plan. Never even went, not once. Yeah, fucking whatever. So <laughs> I'm in New York. I'm getting tattooed, right? It's like 11 o'clock at night, and fucking Gary calls me. And I hadn't talked to Gary in a couple months because the tour was over, and I had already, you know. He's like, hey, man, I just wanted to wish you a Merry Christmas. And I'm like, you fucking Satan motherfucker. You don't fucking celebrate Christmas. Like, ah, you know the fucking deal with the kids and all that. I'm like, yeah. He goes, hey, man, um, we kind of liked what we heard when you did that, when you did Deranged, which I fucking ruined it because I had, you know, a lot of people, they sing along with a CD. They think it's real fucking easy. You throw a mic in your hand with a live band, I'm, I, I guarantee you, you're going to be like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, the people. That pe- song spits the fire. That, that was fast. It, right? It's fast, a lot of words. A lot of words. Yeah, so, you know, I fucking ruined it. But, um. Anyway, they call me and they're like, "We want you to come audition." I'm like, "Well, I'm, I'm not gonna be home for like two weeks, man." I'm because I was going scuba diving right after that. Uh, uh, oh no, I wasn't. I was actually work. I had to go back to LA to work for like a week after New Year's. From New Year's after, so I was in New, in New York till New Year's and then working for like that week after. So I said I'll come up like January 10th. So around there, so I I uh, I get to uh, I. I rode my motorcycle up, and I auditioned at the old studio that, that burned down, the crackhead, that goes the meth Dan's, spot. Dan's, yes. So I, I auditioned there. Terrible the first night. I had fucking Kill Bill staring at me in front of me. With his fucking arms crossed. St- sitting on a, I'm standing there, Zed. He's sitting on a fucking folding chair in front of me. You know? Really? <laughs> I forget all the words. I didn't want to bring a cheat sheet, but I'm like, fuck, man, you know? So I never really sang these songs. I sang with the CD. I, sure. I only knew Bonded by Blood, but I did like tempo, and uh-huh. I thought it was some of your finest work. Uh-huh. And I did say that at the time. So I said, you know what, let me... They're like, come back tomorrow. We'll try it again. And I came back the next day, and I met Lee for the first time because he was rehearsing downstairs with Heathen. And uh, I went up, and I But sang. Rick was still in at that time. Rick was still in the band. 
Rick was still in the band, so it was me, Rick, Tom, and Gary, uh -huh. and Jack. And Jack. And um, so I we rehearsed, and then uh, they were like, all right, cool. So second day was way better. I sang Bonded. I sang uh, stuff that was a little easier with timing. Uh -huh. Actually, Bonded it was, a, for me, I could always, that, that beginning always got me. I don't know why. Um, my timing is terrible. So... Uh, Lesson of Violence, War is My Shepherd, and I think War is My Shepherd is the one that really got them, you know? Uh -huh. So I um, I said, okay, cool, well, I'm leaving, and I left the next morning. I had a hotel done over in Oakland, and I got on my motorcycle the next morning. I went back home. I went and worked for, like, a couple days at a couple shows, and then Gary called me and says, hey, man, we're all going to be in Anaheim at NAMM. Why don't you come by? I'm like, oh, I'm already going to be there. I have a room and everything. I'm like, oh, cool, well, fuck. We'll see you there. It's like January 2005, right? Yeah, January 2005. It's uh, like January like 25th or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Third week. Third, third week of January. Something right? like that, yeah. So I'm there. I go, me and uh, Jen from L7 go and my friend Jeff, and we're hanging out there. And uh, I fucking Al Jorgensen was, I was hanging out with him. Uh, I kind of knew him, but he was on acid, so uh, uh, whatever. So no. I was babysitting Al. <laughs> I was babysitting Al. We yeah. went and saw. And then Gary says, hey, man. Meet us at the at the uh, Fender booth, and I I was like okay, so I was with Al, and we walked through, and Ronnie James Dio Al lit us. We were in the middle of fucking Nam, and Al lit a cigarette, and I was like, well fuck, I'm gonna light one too. So I lit one, and we're standing there, and Ronnie James walked up to us, and he goes, hey man, let me get a drag of that. And handed my cigarette. He took a fucking puff. He goes, I can't believe you guys are smoking in the middle of Nam. And I was like, I don't give a fuck. He's got a big glass of wine. In his oh, hand. I bet he does. So anyway, he's a pisser. Yeah, he's funny <laughs> shit. So uh, we uh, we go over to Fender booth, and then we're standing there. And uh, I was wearing I was with, I was with Rick, and I was wearing a FedEx in his shirt because it was one of my favorite shirts. I thought that was such a great story. That the bullshit about it being fucking sued for something. They yeah, didn't fuck about so. I'm um, standing there, and then Gary goes, "Hey man, everyone, meet the meet the new singer of Exodus." And I was like, "I turned around, like, what? Really? Huh. That's where they told me, right there." And I was like, "All right, cool." And then I was like, "All right, now I got excited in the beginning for a Rob. What do you? What was your emotions going through at that was, time? Was it know, just kind of ah? I guess this is cool. Or fuck, this has been the thing that I've been waiting to come my way, and mm. this could be the thing for me. Or what was your? What was your? What were you thinking at that time?" Seemed like fun. Right. Seemed like fun. Yeah, let's fucking do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let's, you know, like... And so the, on the bus, when I when, during the Megadeth tour, I mean, I walked on the bus, and it was like we were long lost brothers from the, from the moment I walked on the bus. Okay, so you had clicked Rick, with them. With them me, um, Rick, and Gary, and Tom, like that. Told the story about Lakeland or Tampa, Florida, yes. whatever that was. I said I was there. What? Fuck, God, man, fuck! And, you know, and the, yeah, and then Tom's, that, Tom's. I think his brother was on tour with you Tim, guys at the time, Tim. right? And he almost got hurt, but yeah. he didn't. Oh, and, Tim made it out. Right. He was yeah. filming, and right. he still has the filming where he puts it on the thing and climbs out, and then he gets up, and he somebody has it, him or Walter, and they look out, and you see the guy trying to get out. And the thing just goes. Whoom, I bet you, buckles. if you look through that video, my fucking dumb face will be in that you crowd. You think? I fucking guarantee it. And fucking, I was there. I remember the guy. So right. Oh, yeah. So I'm on the bus. So now I'm fucking. I'm fucking like royalty at this point. And I was a really good tech. Like I really was a good tech. Like I loved guitars. Sexual guitar tech. You, I you? I knew guitars. I knew Floyd Roses. I knew their rigs. I I figured and. They actually, Gary said, he goes, you're one of the best techs I ever had because they g never broke a string, never out of tune, did you never anything handle gone Gary on. or did you do? I handled Rick, Gary, and Jack. Oh, so you did all three? All three. Oh, that, those were the lean years, I yeah. guess. <laughs> wow. It was me and Bill, cool. Bill doing well, the yeah, drums. Yeah, Kill Bill, yeah. Mm -hmm. Kill Bill doing drums and me I doing love guitars. Him. Yeah. I love them. And um, yeah, so that's what that was. And, you know, there was it was fun. It, it was fun as shit, man. I was just having a good time, man. I was just, it that's was a good. cool job, you know what I mean? And, Get to drive or tour around and fucking sure. whatever. So, and then I go, okay, and join the fucking band. You know, yeah, I'll do it. And it wasn't like, holy fuck, I'm going to. I remember when I was on the phone, when I got the call, when I was getting, ta I'm in the middle of a tattoo and I take, I'm sorry, I got to take this call. Take the call. I come back and I go, hey man, I'm going to be the singer of Exodus. And I hadn't even auditioned yet. And he's like, really? I go, yeah, I mean, dude, how fucking hard can it be? 
right. scream at the top of my lungs right. about Satan and fucking yeah, right. exactly. how fucked up the church is. How yeah, hard sure. can that fucking be, you know? Huh? I don't think everyone. I don't think everyone can do it, though. I, think I it's... believe me. I I I don't think so. There's, <laughs> or or you could probably do it. They could do it for one night, <clears throat> but like you said, do it for twenty four, seventeen in a row, twenty four yeah. in a row. Do it for forty two out of forty four. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Or forty five. Mm-hmm. You know, because there was a couple of oh two years ago we did those nine one day off, ten yeah. one day off. Seven, so one dude, day off. So. I join the fucking band. I come out. I do a demo. We do with Tilo. Tilo records three songs, right? That shovel-headed was, songs, right? Yeah, shovel-headed. So we record I Am Abomination and a couple other ones. I don't remember. Gary says, hey, man, I'm going to let you write the lyrics to this one. And he gives me the music on a CD. I go, oh, cool. I happen to be reading this guy, Brian Lumley. It's all about vampires and fucking... And god and fucking just it was just it's a great series it's called the necroscope series it's like 13 uh-huh. books and i read the whole thing multiple times i read it like three times uh-huh. in my life and i'm reading this at the time i'm reading it and i'm like so i write all the lyrics man i'm fucking just just i wrote the karma's messenger about vengeance you know um it's a big part of the story is in this in this book so i said okay cool and i, I was like so honored that he was this iconic band and he goes and he was just gonna let me write lyrics i'm like oh all right so I did. So I was like fucking stoked. So we do the demo, and then Rick quits, and then Tom quits. Wow. Wow. Right. Bang bang. So I fucking I go back to L.A. and uh, I'm just waiting for whatever call. I just go back to my life, you know. Um, and then Gary calls one day and says, "Hey man, we're gonna we're gonna start recording the record. We got Paul Bostaff playing drums." And I got, you know, uh, Lee yeah. from Heathen, right? And uh, so I don't know either one of those guys. So I come back up and we start rehearsing and doing songs and stuff. And and it was cool, man. You know what I mean? It was fun singing songs and fucking whatever. But now here I'm not working, not making any fucking money. So I got a sublet in my apartment. Um, you know, See, put I my had shit to in work storage. I put in my the, shit in storage. After the tempo of the damned, when we reconvened for that, I was already working a job so on top of going on i had to i i had to balance both yeah. i could not i had to you had kids and a wife yeah i, had I didn't even have That's a fucking great. i didn't even have a, a fucking cat That's i had nothing awesome. I had yeah, a, yeah it would have been easier then i had it a motorcycle and you know so i i so jack so i was staying at i'd come up here for a week and i was staying at a, at a hotel down in oakland and jack was like why don't you just come stay on my couch man I'm like fuck yeah they'll save me so much money you know because i was going back and forth right so and then, uh, and then, uh, so then we start come up and we start recording the record. And uh, you did with Juan, right? Shovelhead was yeah, it was Juan, yeah, right. So, you know, Gary does his scratch tracks and fucking, I do. I knew a couple of the songs already, but most of them I hadn't even heard yet because we didn't really rehearse anything. We just did those three songs, which were kind of like, pretty much, you know, they were the first three we did. But um, so we re-record everything, and I get up there and I. I sing Rays. I realize my timing is really bad because I can't, because I've never done this before. I never, never fucking did it on this, on this scale, but I gave it my all, man. I fucking blew myself out the first day. Fucking. That's why my, my voice is so scratchy on that record. Cause I didn't know how to control myself. I just, I just went a hundred percent full tilt as, as much as I could. And I got through that record. By the end of the record, I started feeling better, but I still smoked cigarettes. Uh-huh. And I realized that I had to quit. So I went to uh, uh, Nikki Black's house, right? Went over to Nikki's house. It was me, her, Kevin, Paul, Jack, and we were all hanging out. Everyone's drinking. And I, I bought that two-for-one camel pack. You buy one pack, get one pack free. And I bought that. I said, this is the last thing I'm buying. I'm right here. And I was going back to L.A. the next morning. So I sat there that night. We all hung out. I smoked a pack of cigarettes. And then I smoked a pack on the driving back to L.A. I get to L.A. I go to my house. It was a Sunday. I smoked my last cigarette at like 10 o'clock at night. And my buddy from San Diego was coming up Monday morning. And uh, I said, uh, I told him, I was like, dude, I gotta, I'm quitting smoking tomorrow. He's like, ah, oh, good. You should, you fucking... He's smelling like an ashtray, motherfucker, because I didn't know I smelled like an ashtray, but obviously I did. So uh, I quit smoking 
and it took me uh, 10 days before I didn't want to kill anyone because I spent 10 days. The first two days I was with him, we were jump, running around L.A., going doing like all sorts of fun shit, hanging out till 5 in the morning, and then he left on Wednesday. And then I uh, – actually, no, I drove him back on Wednesday morning to San Diego, and then I drove home, and then I stayed in my apartment for 30 days. I didn't go out anywhere. I didn't go I – I had backstage passes to Iron Maiden – and uh, at uh, Ozfest, and when Iron Maiden and Ozzy were, uh-huh, yeah, remember the egg con thing? I, heard about I was, that. I had vi- VIP backstage to that show, and I didn't go because I was really? like, I'm gonna smoke cigarette if I go to that show. I'm not gonna go, and I didn't go. I was like, I need to quit smoking. So I knew that I had to quit. So I, uh, I did after like 30 days, man. I quit, and then it was time to go back up there um, and rehearse. And uh, so I started going up there rehearsing. We rehearsed Monday to Thursday. We went through, we'd come up with a set list, and it was mostly bonded and uh, fabulous stuff, and then and then a couple off tempo, and then all like the entire new record. Dude, we were playing an hour and 45 minutes the first, the first nine Brutal. months. The nine months of touring was an hour and 45. Because Gary was like, dude, there's so many fucking songs. How can we not play this? How can we not play that? And we weren't even playing Toxic. Because Paul hated the song, so they didn't want to play Toxic. Oh, my. Yeah. Wow. Anyway. Wow. So, join the band, finish the record. Cool. I go work Coachella. I work Stagecoach. All right, we're going to go do a tour. We're going to do States tour with Three Inches of Blood and and um, uh, the band from Every Time I Die. No, not Every Time I Die. Uh, they were from here. They were from Oakland. Great guys. Sonny was in the band. Oh, I can't remember the name of that band. From Oakland? Yeah, they were fucking good. Pat was a singer. He had his tattoo. His head. And, uh, anyway, so we go on this tour. Um, and uh, the first show was a... Do you remember your first Exodus show? Uh-huh. Okay, my first Exodus show was... It couldn't have been that bad. There's no way. There's no way. <laughs> Mine's worse. I'm telling no you. No way. Jack. Mine's worse. You didn't catch a full beer in the head if, yeah. unless you caught a full no. beer can in the head. I would have. I would have liked a beer, you, full beer in the you head. You didn't. You didn't experience <laughs> my to, first Exodus show. <laughs> my first Exodus show. It's was, on video too. You see it coming out of nowhere, and it just goes, "Ma'am," right in the fucking head. And it was not open. Nobody drank it and threw it. They bought this place okay. we played. The farm was sold bottles and cans, and that was a fucking mistake. Wasn't into a cup. Somebody bought that beer, did not pop it, because I'm going to fucking hit Zetro. Bail off! <laughs> Bam! Dude, we played a, a Mexican Mercado. So we walk into this room, right, with a full tour bus, with a tour bus and a trailer, with a crew. We walk in. Dude, it has, like, <coughs> one of those little, little like, cafeteria windows where the, Right? There's a band playing on the stage is like a is like six inches, dude. It's a little block of wood in the corner, and there's a, a Mexican band playing full the full getup with families and kids running around, and this is our first show. So that was the opening act. No, that was just a band that was playing there during the day, and we were gonna play there that night, right? And Lee goes, <laughs> Lee goes "Welcome to Exodus, dude." And it was both of our first gig. And we were like, fuck, man. So we're laughing about it and whatever. We watched the band. They were fucking great. And then and then, uh, and then, they shoved like 50 fucking dirty Modesto metalheads into this fucking shithole. They sure and, did, didn't and they? they? And uh, Jack's like, dude, he goes, I know what's going to happen. You're going to go up there. You're going to grab that mic and you're going to fucking. First thing you're going to do is you're just going to pass out and fucking, fucking be your first gig. But we did it. Got through it. I realized that I was a little bit, a little bit punk rock and a little bit metal at the same time, which, you know, and then, so then I remember Lee telling me, just, just be your, just find yourself. You'll, you'll be all right, you know, but then I had someone else, I won't name names in the band, but they played drums and they fucking told me like, no, you need to, you need to watch other singers and you need to, fucking. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. And I didn't. Me, no. And me, me and Paul didn't really get along because it was just—it wasn't that we didn't get along. It was just he had his idea of things, and I had mine. And but I mean, uh, as a singer opposed to a player, a drummer, or a guitar player, you really need to find your own, you know, because mm-hmm. there's no 
tone to rely back on or a drum that they can that's you it's all about yeah. you and it's and when the music stops it's like your solo time you know what right. i mean and, and, and yeah. you have to you know you know and, and it's whatever your trip is you know and and, and you kind of got to i mean after the legacy being in legacy and then joining exodus by the early times i had my trip down i knew right. what you i knew was who you were, i knew yeah. how i went at it <clears throat> i didn't know any I of that and that would that's that would be difficult i could see that too right. you know because finding that and it's just very it'd be, 37 years old never you know. did this before in my life so we we go on this tour fucking i struggle the whole time um mentally <laughs> one of the things that was happening was was i i would say things like so we've been on tour with bands you ever go on tour with a band you know they say the same thing every night between the same songs they have the same spew they do they do the same it's like an act and they do if you see it two nights in a row like oh we said the same fucking thing last night well i was more of a like a stand-up comic where i didn't do that i talked about what happened that day and i would talk about things that were happening in the news and i talked about like and, you know it's always just like this little banter real quick but i never i never thought about it before i said it and i threw a lot of like shit that i shouldn't have said i uh -huh. said I made a lot of, like, I used to make Gary cringe, dude. Like, I used to make him, like, oh, I used to, but there was something about it that was, like, it was, like, fun to do that, too, to him, and to do it to the crowd, because I found this thing. They're like hockey fans, right? I know you're a Calgary Flames fan. I yes. know that about you, right? Yes. Um, and I'm a New York Rangers fan, yes, right? Yes, I know that. So I can break your balls about how much Calgary is such a piece of shit team, Ugh. and they're the fucking worst, right? And you can break my balls about how the Rangers suck, but we can still love hockey and we're still that's how i was with the fans i was i was uh i felt like i connected with them and i could make them fucking angry at me but at the same time they had like this little bit of respect to, oh yeah maybe maybe we are a bunch of pussies you know what i mean or you know what i mean it was like this it was like this thing that i i i had with them rather than it was like a hockey thing more than a than a than a thing and and I didn't want to say what what everyone wanted me to say and I was defiant with them and, and it caused a riff and the and we would argue and 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 go through shit me and Paul and and me and uh, Gary from time to time but Gary was actually really awesome but you know I mean I, I did make him cringe a lot dude oh man I used to say such shit I mean I still say something every <laughs> once in a while and then I'll look over and he'll go. Mm, he'll yeah, the dis I call it the disappointed stepfather he'll, look. He'll look. He'll do this, <laughs> and, and, and I know. Oh shit! And then I'll get this like, <laughs> fucking. Oh fuck! I should have said that thing. Yeah. But I mean, I think that that's coming from um, not trying to be, um, um, you know, a cookie cutter, and also trying to be spontaneous. And like, because I like. I didn't like the bands that said the same thing every night. Like yourself, I mean, I, I'll keep a pattern with certain things, but I'll also I like to see what, and I'll put, hey, hey, you, check it out, you. No, 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 no. If you do that, every people, you know, like I'm picking one yeah. guy out. So I try to. Yeah. You never know what's going to be in between songs, and I think that that, I, I to me, that's Exodus. That's yeah. Bailoff was the same way. Yeah. Bailoff back in the day, bro. Bailoff would be like. You'd go to the shows not to hear him sing. You go to the shows to hear the fuck what he's gonna say in between the songs. Yeah. And I was again because, like yourself, I was an outsider coming in. I got to look at the band from a different view. I'm the Blaze you know, Bailey of fucking Exodus. Oh well, the, the, the play, that, <laughs> that's hilarious. That's hilarious. The Blaze, the play. I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I, yeah man. Yeah, I guess I so. I know the fuck I am. I'm, yeah, I'm all right with it. Not Gary Sharon though, right? <laughs> not Gary. No, Chiron, that's right, no. Blaze. But, hey, I tell you what. Blaze's two records with Iron Maiden are fucking great. So, regarding it's like John you Bush, want, man, it's like John uh, Bush. He's, you, I'm, fuck, he's my favorite singer in metal. Sorry to say, yeah. I, and every time I see him, I tell him that I love him. Yeah, Armistead got a new record out. I, I, dudes. I like I like the guys in Anthrax, but I'll never forgive them for that that Florida show. They just no, really no. I was I on tour. I, I went on we tour. We were already shuffled out of there. I remember. Right. I didn't remember yeah. that. They just were. It was just. It was, you know, I guess they thought they were doing the right thing. I bet you if they saw it on video now, they'd be like, eh, we shouldn't have done that. Let's talk a little bit about shovel-headed kill machine because okay. I am, I don't sing much of that, right. but I do sing death amphetamine. Uh, uh, Hard song. Fuck. You want to know why? Because the, the, the cadence is different on every verse. 
Yeah, the sentences start. They don't all start in the same place. No, some they of them do start not. on the and. Some, some start on, start on one, one. Some start on, the, start on the, two. That's right. Yeah, and if that's you get right. and if you get off, you get yes, dude. Get, I I fucked it up for a hundred shows every single fucking night. Could not. And with Paul, <clears throat> here's the thing, right? I do it better with Tom because Tom doesn't. Tom's meter is fucking perfect, yeah, right? Yeah. Paul would throw. Bricks he plays out, it dude. different too. But Tom plays a yeah. little different. Yes. just a little different. But the thing was, is like I couldn't. You know, it's like it was like trying to remember lyrics, right? And then you're also trying to remember. Oh, this one starts on one. This one starts on the and. This one's and it was just for a hundred, dude. At one point, they're like, dude, if you keep fucking this song up, we're not gonna play it anymore. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Fuck it, let's not. Play. And I was like, I'll get it. Just fucking give me a fucking shot. You know what I mean? So that was the one song that was the hardest to sing. Was that song? Well, that's and I find that because I I'm looking at it like when I I had to dissected i had to break it down to learn it you know and it was one of the la the last ones i had done iconoclasm and 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 and, and uh, children of a worthless god those were like the first ones right. i did uh, uh, uh um I, I first ones i learned but it was this was one of the, the later ones i learned and i've done a lot i mean Ballad of leonard charles is my favorite bro sorry Love yeah, that man. fucking song, yeah. and I just—I'm the one going. Let's open with Battle of the Letters. What do you mean you go? I'm like, yeah, let's open with that. It's so heavy. So then, when I went to learn it, I had to dissect. I had to dissect Death Amphetamine, to, like you said. Yeah. Okay. So first verse, first one comes in right. Second line comes in quick. Third and fourth are on the uh, on the one. Whole second verse to me. This is how I see it, and I right. look at it that way. All the lines fall in on the one. Third verse, first one comes in fast. Second one comes in real fast. Third, third one one's comes, late. Third one comes in late. Fourth one comes in where, where it's normal, supposed to be. Normal timing, yeah. exactly. See, and I had to fucking like break that shows. down. You all, I didn't have a hundred shows to do that shows. in. I, 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 I had to <clears throat> nail it, and I, and I killed me. And I mean, Rob, I probably listened to that. I'm I'm gonna say no less than fifteen hundred times to get it right because I really like to be prepared vocally when I go out yeah. there, and I just I had no problem with any of the others. They were great. I had so, and I, to be honest, I love singing. I could, I put more of your songs if I'm making this. Said, <laughs> hey, can we put this one in? That's hey, good awesome. riddance. Let's put good yeah. riddance in there. You know what I mean? Let's yeah. do that one. Yeah. You know, the, the fucking so I I'm 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 I love that and and but that one was like. Out of all the ones that you've done on, on on you know through Exhibit A and Exhibit B, and that that one was like the one that I I was like fuck, how did he fucking do this? Because it's like, and and I've got a, on the third verse, I have to almost back myself up to Tom and listen to the drum. Yeah, listen to that. He goes. Psh, psh, th th then I, you go. I, I thank you very. <laughs> I, it's exactly yeah, what I do. I know what about. And I back up uh, to him and so, and that's like. I want to hear that. They're going to come over and but don't bang with me. I'm so, trying to listen right now. You know what I mean? And so, I wait for that because I yeah. couldn't come in if he didn't well, I, do it. So I had to tell Tom, like, Tom, that's you have to do that. Every time. Every time because I'll fuck it up. If yeah. And what's fucked up is once you get off on the line. Good luck. You're fucked. You're done. You're fucked yeah, until the next out. sentence. So I used to just pretend my microphone was fucked up. Uh-huh. That's what I would do. Like, and then the crew come running. I go, I'm only faking. All right, and then I'd start again. That's how. That was my trick. Really? Was to pretend the microphone wasn't working, which which it was. I just forced myself to figure the cadence out and mm. learn where it went. So I actually, I at really the chapel, I was terrified to do it because really? I knew because I hadn't done it in so long. Did you do it that night? Yeah, I did that night. You did that night. Yeah. So, uh I can I I have a hard time remembering lyrics. So even my own, like even in Generation Kill, uh -huh. I have a cheat sheet below me. I have Do you? I have a cheat for some reason, and I don't even smoke fucking weed. You fucking weed head, and you fucking remember lyrics. I, I hear you remember everything. Yeah. yeah so at the chapel, yeah, dude, I didn't remember the. I forgot the chorus at uh, on on children. Really? I was faking it. I was just going. I was just. I was mumbling the melody. And I didn't remember the words. And I'm going, the fuck are the words? The fuck are the words? And I didn't remember them. And I mumble. If you listen to the tape, uh -huh. I mumble through yeah, that. Yeah, because he I don't recorded say that, actually. Wayne, Wayne did it. 
Wayne. You gotta listen to children. You got it's a fucking Wayne comical. Has it. I don't say a fucking I didn't say one word. The whole chorus. It happens three times and I never <laughs> remembered it. Really? Never. But I mumbled the fucking melody enough that people were like, you mean, didn't I you fear? No, no, no. No. The 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 sub chorus. Oh oh, uh, uh, follow me blindly, the dead like a dog. Yeah, whatever fi- that yeah, yeah. that whole section didn't remember not one fucking word. Mumbled really? the whole thing three times, and nobody in the crowd gave two shits. I don't think, I don't think they so. don't know. They don't give a shit. They know. <laughs> yeah. One guy did. Follow us blindly. One blindly guy did. He probably blindly shit on me on fucking little. blabbermouth. Fucking fucking. You saved us a killer. Yeah. Die for Allah, you were all children of war. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. I, the, I remember the last line, of course. You, you, but, you were all. Yeah. You got that part. God. Yeah, dude. So I used to. Dude, I forgot Blacklist one night. I fucking couldn't remember how it started. I couldn't remember the first. I would go, "What's the first word? What's the first word?" And he go, "I don't know." And he'd run away from me. And Gary. Gary would run. Yeah, like I would run to. What's the first word? But see, that's that. That can happen to anyone. It's just, I just need the first word, and then once the first word comes in. The whole thing falls right. in. So I, 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 one night I was, uh, I was at Slayer a couple years ago, hanging out with Halford because Halford lives in Phoenix, right? Uh-huh. So it was way. This is like a couple hours before the show, and I get there to see Gary. But then I was hanging out, and I ran into Rob in one of the hallways. <clears throat> so we're sitting there talking, and I said, uh, I said, uh, "Hey man, do you forget the lyrics?" He goes. Dude, I have 23 fucking teleprompters on the stage. I have iPads everywhere with them with the floating lyrics because I don't I go, dude, I have the worst time. He goes, "Yeah." And you don't smoke because we're both sober. And I go, "And we don't smoke pot." He goes, "Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it. I've sing this song for 30 fucking years and I just go blank. And if I don't have that first word, so my set list used to be the set list and then I'd have a sheet next to it and have the first word, word of all the song. Really? But only, not, not every song, but a lot of them. And then by the fourth or fifth show, it got less and less. And then by the end of the tour, I didn't need anything. I was fine. It was only the repetition on a consistent basis. But if we did a tour for six weeks and then I had three weeks off, and then had another six weeks, that first show... I was a fucking mess, man. I was a fucking... I had a cheat sheet everywhere. And fucking people... The, Gary used to get so mad... But he got more mad at me wearing Vans checkered sneakers on stage. Oh, really? Oh, dude. I you let to... that go after a while because that was your look. You had that in the hockey thing going on for a while. No, he just used to drive him crazy, man. He used to drive him crazy. I did it because it drove him crazy. Yeah. Lee used to giggle, dude. Fucking Lee would be like, dude, you're just torturing him. I go, I know. Let's I know. take a break, and then we're going to get back, and we're going to talk a little <laughs> bit about Gary Holt. <laughs> yeah. 